you guys absolutely loved the first 100 days on one block but it was just a little bit too easy if you guys haven't already seen me survive 500 days on one block the playlist with all of the episodes will be linked below but for this brand new series i had to spice it up a little bit i needed something to lose so with that being said welcome to season two of one block but in hardcore mode i have three main goals for this video the first goal is to get a full set of netherite armor the second goal is to defeat the ender dragon and for the third goal it's something more unique i want to build a different biome for every single phase that goes by so by the end of the video i'll have 10 different and unique biomes built on my one block island and if you guys haven't already please subscribe we are only seven subscribers away from two million we got it cookie army now let's see if i can survive 100 days in a one block world in hardcore mode our journey begins on day one on top of this one block. There is absolutely nothing around me and the only thing I could do is to mine this block right under my feet. The good news is I already spent 500 days on a one block world already. So I felt like I was pretty prepared. But the bad news is this is hardcore mode. That means I cannot die at all. With all these monster parties and all the mobs that spawn from this one block, I have to be careful. But with that being said, I had some experience. So I knew the first ever pig was spawning, my boy Douglas. Let me know in the comments if you guys you remember Douglas but this time I knew he was coming so I didn't want him to die but I almost ended up pushing him off the one block into the void guess I really wasn't that ready so I quickly made a crafting table and some slabs to expand the island it was simply way too risky to just stand on the one block in hardcore mode and it looks like Douglas learned a little something himself because he's not even standing on anything he's just floating there like bro how are you doing that I then got my first ever chest and inside it was a water bucket after a little bit of more mining I got a sapling and you guys know what that means and just like that i'm on to the first phase the planes this is the phase where you get all of your dirt wood and all your animals so you have to be careful you cannot lose any of your animals or you'll never get them back and then another piggy spawned my boy douglas has a friend i think they might be brothers to be honest they look pretty identical i continued mining and i got my first ever cow and you guys know the cow's name it starts with a g and just like that i have the entire family back and while i mined into the night i also got a sheep and a chicken and the island was getting a little packed so i had to expand the island and for some reason all of the animals were staring into my soul i have no idea why they were just staring at me it's kind of creeping me out i then spent the rest of the night mining away right and early on day two i had a whole family on my little island there were so many animals everywhere it was nice having a little bit of company so i started working on a little house for them by house i mean a little dent in the ground that gives them no space to walk around in and they're just overcrowded once i built them a little trench i pushed the piggies into the hole look how cute these three pigs look in there they don't look depressed at all and on the other side of the trench i had two cows after mining all the way into the night of day two i finally got an upgrade and the next phase is the underground phase this is the phase where you get all of your cobblestone iron and this is when mobs finally start to spawn so i have to be a little bit careful i was really excited for the cobblestone though because i can finally upgrade my tools after some more mining i finally got a mushroom cow i accidentally pushed him into the wrong trench though so i gave him a little love tap and he ran right back up what a good boy on day three i had three of my trees grow but i didn't have any iron for shears and i couldn't collect the leaves once i mined the wood i just watched the leaves decay it was really sad to see then the first ever zombie spawned he scared me at first but then he was harmless i then got some bunnies and i pushed them into the hole as fast as i could because i knew they would jump into the void i then got even more bunnies and guess what two of them jumped off into the void i wasn't fast enough to save them so i quickly ran back to save the ones that were still alive and then one of them also jumped off it was like he was running away from my smell but there was one last rabbit still alive i had the chance to save him what just happened do i smell that bad that the bunnies just jumped off into the void whenever i came close to them i need to invest in some shampoo but anyways i had seven saplings so i wanted to expand the island so i can make a bigger tree farm i then made a little border around the platform so i wouldn't fall off then i placed down some spruce saplings but i was just missing one i read all of your comments last time and yes we're saying if you place down four saplings it will make a ginormous tree so i'm definitely gonna try that once to get one more sapling so i ended up planting the regular oak saplings then while i was mining a creeper spawn and blew up my island i wasn't even expecting him and on day four as i was mining even more mobs have spawned two zombies were attacking me and my axe actually broke so i had to kill the last zombie with my pickaxe after killing those zombies i got quite hungry and the only food i had were apples so i started expanding the island even more for a farm i made a pretty big platform and then i started placing all the dirt that i had i wanted to make a pretty big farm so i can breed the cows and get some steak to eat your boy loves some medium rare the only sad part was i only had 
had three seeds to work with. So 95% of the farm was empty. Then I just remembered I have mushroom cows. I'm not sure how I always forget, but then I made myself some wooden bowls and started milking them up for their mushroom soup. I wonder where they get their unlimited supply of soup from. On day five, I noticed my chests were getting quite messy and full. So I knew it was time for a brand new chest room. Once again, I started expanding the island even more. And I also had plans to make two staircases beside this middle area platform that will lead up to another floor that will lead to something else. I don't know what to do about that. I just start speaking like baby after a while. But yeah, I had plans for a staircase that leads upstairs and I wanted to make my chest room in the middle. I then smacked down all of my chests onto the floor I started moving all of my items over there. On day six, I realized there was a ginormous tree that grew. I just want to live in there like a monkey that I am. A lot of people don't like these big trees because they're so messy and hard to get rid of. But I was really happy because I needed a lot of wood and dude, just leaves. Like, look at the leaves. Come on. And I spent half of the day just cutting down all the trees like a lumberjack and just watching all the leaves decay and disappear. <laughs> just so sad. <laughs> You guys are weird. Why do you guys make noises like that? I have way too much fun with these voiceovers. <gasps> oh, I almost passed out there. Got a little lightheaded. I then did some epic mining to pass the time to wait for these trees to grow. I then saw this bunny living on the edge. I tried saving him. Then he saved himself. And then he just hopped right off into the void again. What is happening with these bunnies? What is wrong with them? But anyways, I went right back to mining. And I knew mobs were going to spawn soon. So I made myself some fences. So I can trap them inside the one block. And they won't be able to hit me. Pretty big brain if I do say so myself. <laughs> then I got a chest that was spitting out some hearts. And I was really happy. This was the first ever time that something loves me back. I opened the chest thinking I would get some diamonds. But I got coal. Like, bruh. That, that is so disrespectful. Respectful. I guess you can say my heart is broken. <laughs> I kind of hurt my throat. Why did I do that? The love chest did give me another sapling though. So now I can finally make the ginormous spruce tree. So I destroyed my current tree farm and then put down the spruce saplings in a two by two square. I'm not even sure if this will work, but I read all of your comments and you guys were telling me to do this. So I'm trusting you guys. You guys better not let me down. On day seven, I finally got another upgrade and it's the icy tundra. Literally the worst phase ever. All you get is snow blocks. Like it's so pointless. Then a little doggy spawned and I accidentally punched him and he wouldn't forgive me. He looked so angry with his red eyes and he also started growling at me and there was nothing I could have done so I had to put the dog down. But on the good news, God, look at the size of that tree that just grew. You guys were not lying when you guys told me this would grow a fat tree. Well, it's not really fat. It's kind of tall and long. It's not like, it's not wide. Okay, never mind. And once I got a closer look, the other tree grew like she. I want you to look at that. Two very tall trees, buddy. What is wrong with me? But anyways, I went down to cut down the tree because I love me some spruce wood. Tree cutting montage. Once I was finished, I got three stacks of spruce logs. Let's go. I love you guys for telling me to plant this tree. It's just free wood. And after like five minutes, the trees grew once again. So I just mined it down. Those trees grow pretty fast for how big they are. On day nine, I started decorating the chest room a little bit because it was looking pretty dry. I added some spruce wood all around the chests and I think it looks pretty good. On day 10, I started working on the spiral staircases to the upstairs. I'm not sure why I love spiral staircases so much. They are so hard to build. Why am I putting myself through all this pain? You guys better like this video for this and once i got both sides complete it looked like a staircase from a mansion what do you guys think on day 11 i did a lot of farming no i'm just playing only farmed three pieces of wheat and i used that wheat to breed the cows because i needed some steak i then spent the night lighting up the entire island so no mobs will spawn and while mining i got met with these homeless skeletons again and i didn't have armor each one of their shots did so much damage only two shots left me at three and a half hearts i was just hiding behind this pillar i had no idea what to do and to make it worse phantom started attacking me so they pushed me away from a hiding spot what are the chances i was panicking and i had no idea what to do and where to go so i just ran over to the big tree and hid behind it yeah i'm just casually hiding inside this tree and <laughs> don't mind me i'm just so scared and i covered myself up and waited all the way until morning on day 12 i smelted the iron that i had so i can make a shield and i also used the iron to finally upgrade my tools and then i went right back to mining my god that voice cracked then these two homeless skeletons spawned and they were like smooching on each other i'm not sure what they were doing i'm not gonna lie i kind of wanted to join it looked kind of fun anyways after a little bit of more mining i got a polar bear and this boy was thick and if you guys watched my original 100 day series on the one block i mistreated my polar bears for 500 days the polar bears was living in poverty i never gave them a proper home so from day 13 to 15 i focused on making the polar bear a nice home and i wanted to make his home out of snow blocks obviously because you know polar bears live in the snow and <laughs> you didn't know fun fact for the day block facts who i then made a little area for a snowman so i can start 
started grinding up some snowballs to turn it into snow blocks. For some odd reason, the snowman wasn't even putting down snow onto the ground. Try changing the block underneath him to a cobblestone block to see if it works, and it still doesn't. I then threw him upstairs, and for some reason, it started working. I'm not even sure what was happening, but hey, at least it got snowballs. I then spent some time grinding some snow for the polar bear's home. I turned all the snowballs into snow blocks, and I started working on the polar bear's house. And it seems like the polar bear actually likes it already. I didn't even push him in here, and he already walked into his new place. I think he's quite happy. If only there were penguins in Minecraft. Then started using the snow slabs to just even out the little mountains I put in his home. And this is what I got so far. I think it looks pretty good. Way better than a little fenced off area. I feel bad for the polar bears in my first one block series. For some reason, the polar bear left his home and started baking in the sun. I think he wanted a suntan. I'm not even sure what he's doing. But once I got him back into his enclosure, I also decided to add some snowmen. Now the polar bear won't be lonely and he will have a friend. I also added these like little scare crow looking things just simply a pumpkin on a fence it just adds a nice little touch and when phantoms spawn they actually shoot snowballs at them that's pretty cool i didn't know that another fun fact of the day if you guys didn't know but this is what the polar bear's home looks like finally finished i think it's pretty awesome it's like i'm at the zoo so i had the amazing idea to actually make a new home for every single phase i get on this one block so by the end of these 100 days i will have at least 10 different homes for all the animals that spawn during each phase and once i kill the ender dragon i will have one home dedicated just for the dragon egg so stay tuned for that to see how all of the homes turn out i'm gonna have an entire zoo after the end of this video it's gonna be pretty awesome on day 16 i went right back to mining because i wanted to get over this snow phase as fast as possible but i did get another dog and this time i didn't accidentally punch him i grabbed the bones from my chest and i only needed one bone to make him my best friend and right after that i got a monster party and i was pretty scared because i didn't have any armor the only thing i had was a shield so i just ran around my island hoping to get away and they got me trapped by the trees i thought i was gonna die the skeleton shot me a couple of times and left me at two and a half hearts i thought it was over man so i ran back up the stairs and blocked myself off once i got back to full health i made the jump to kill the skeleton because the skeleton is the one i'm worried about and once i jump killed the skeleton i quickly killed off the two zombies that was a close one so i decided to expand the fences around the one block so if i do get another monster party it will be big enough so the monster party won't break the fences after a bit of more mining i went through fox spawned and i thought he'd be a great fit for the polar bear's home so i made him a fence path into the zoo and the fox ran right in but i didn't realize the polar bear doesn't like these foxes the polar bear started attacking the fox i just threw the fox into its own trap i feel kind of bad that fox was zooming though i mean at least the uh, polar bear gave back the gold that was in the fox's mouth i mean kind of helped me i then got another dog and i tamed it with two bones this time i'm getting so lucky and the first thing he did was ran over to the edge of the world yeah I'm a little bit scared. I then realized my island is completely full of spiders. Yeah, that is my worst nightmare. On day 18, I did more farming. I wanted enough wheat to breed all my cows so I can start eating steak instead of mushroom stew. Because I'm no peasant. After an entire day of mining, I finally got out of the snow phase. And onto the next phase, which is the ocean phase. And it just gives you so much sand. I love it. I then got myself a turtle. And Minecraft turtles are so cute. I let him free from the fences and decided, you know what? I need to make him a home just like the polar bear i wanted to make an ocean right beside the snow biome so i can throw the turtles and fishes back into the water but the only problem is i need a lot of sand so i spent the rest of day 20 mining the one block and then i got attacked by some squidwards it took me quite a while to kill them and once i healed up i got attacked by four phantoms i hate these flying dinosaurs man they are so annoying but it looked kind of funny having the phantom's head poke through the ceiling like this you only see their eyes glitching through the roof it's kind of cute and the same exact night i got a attacked by an elder guardian and this guy was beefy i never fought many of these things but he left me at two heart i ran for my life i was so scared i didn't want to lose all of my progress once i was all healed up i went back for war and then he zapped me with something and left me at two hearts again i just hid in this corner i was so scared i've never fought one of these elder guardians before i've never even raided an ocean monument yeah i'm a noob okay i know but if you guys want to see a regular minecraft hardcore series let me know in the comments maybe i'll start one i waited all night to heal up and once i did I finally killed him. That took so long. On day 22, I chopped down these two giant trees. And yes, it takes that long. It's so slow with this iron axe. On day 23, I did some more farming. And I noticed my turtle was pretty desperate for some water. He was sitting by the only water source right by the farm. So I knew it was time to make him a house. I grabbed all the slabs I needed and I started expanding the island.
And once I had the area all laid down, I placed down all of the sand that I could find. Unfortunately, I did run out, so I had to go back mining. And I also got a chest with a fully durability trident and two kelp. That would be perfect for the turtle's home. I can go spear fishing for my own turtle. Nah, I'm just kidding. I meant the kelp. And for some reason, I wanted to throw the trident up into the air and not into the void like my first 100 days. If anybody even remembers that. And then I aimed the trident at my dog. Yeah, I don't really know why. I got kind of bored. While I was mining, a dolphin spawned and it's just so sad seeing him just suffocate. I wish I can save him and put him into the pool I was going to make. So unfortunately, he drowned and died. Well, I guess he didn't drown. He suffocated on air. Well, actually, oh, I have no idea. I'm not an animeologist. I just made that word up. <laughs> and then another turtle spawned. What should we name him, guys? Let's name this guy Wilbert. Wilbur for short. And a couple of blocks later, I got another monster party. And I was pretty scared for this one. So I quickly blocked myself into my chest room and hid. Like, why don't these squidwards just suffocate? How are they still alive, but they're not in water? And then the elder guardian gave me five minutes of mining fatigue. Are you kidding me? I have to wait five whole minutes? Five minutes later, after I grew an entire beard and had four children, the mining fatigue finally wore off. And I knew killing them with an axe would take forever. So I started mining a hole so they could just fall off and jump into the void. See you later, Squidward. And this one guardian thought he was a cow. I then spent the next two days mining. And I had a lot of fish suffocate on me. I was so sad I couldn't save them. But I finally mined enough sand for my turtle home and started filling up the aquarium. I also threw in some prismarine blocks just to change up the color a little bit. And since this was going to be an aquarium, I had to replace this with glass blocks. And now it's ready to be filled with water. And just like that, we have an aquarium. I then threw some corals around just to add some color and some kelp. Now that is a beautiful aquarium. All it needs is some turtles and some fish. After dragging this turtle across the hardwood floor, I finally got the turtle into the water. And he was swimming in there pretty happily. And I continued the rest of the day mining. I then got a chest with a book and quill in it. And guess what I wrote inside? I wrote, please subscribe. We are only three subscribers away from two million. So uh, you should, you know, probably click that subscribe button. You know, looking kind of juicy. That little big red button right down there. Yeah, click it. Thanks. Love you guys. I then got another chest with a full durability trident and two buckets of fish. Let's go. My turtle will have some friends. Hopefully the turtle doesn't slurp them up because that'll be kind of bad. Look at the fishies in the aquarium. Now that is awesome. It's coming together. On day 31, I finally got an upgrade. It was about time. I was so sick of getting those prismarine blocks and those dead coral blocks. They are so pointless. And the next phase is the jungle dungeon. It's so weird because I played 500 days on a one block world and I don't even remember what these new phases are. My brain's the size of a raisin, I swear. But this phase was basically all cobblestone and disgusting jungle wood. But hey, I did get some parrots. Let's name one William. He's back to life. So I went into my farm and chest and grabbed some seeds. I had to tame these birds fast before they fly away into the void. And this one one boy literally ate all of my seeds. What is this? Could somebody please explain how this little parrot ate like 30 seeds? And I had to make William bust it down real quick. And then the other parrot only needed one seed. Bruh, life is a scam. I then got them to sit up here so they can watch over the entire one block. And then the craziest thing happened. I went over to my wheat farm to harvest some more seeds. And when I broke the wheat, I found a turtle in there. He was hiding in the wheat the entire time, drinking the little water that was there there while the other turtle is living in paradise i felt so bad i totally forgot about this turtle he was probably so thirsty so i pushed him into his new home and it looked like he was struggling he didn't have a lot of energy in him but once he got in there the two turtles were already in love they swam by each other and gave each other a little quick smooch i'm so jealous of two pixelated turtles <laughs> But anyways, I finished off harvesting my wheat and bred my cows. And I couldn't forget my starving sheep. But I didn't have any carrots, so my pigs were, uh... Yeah, they, they were pretty hungry. Let's just uh, not talk about them. Hopefully, the uh, FDA doesn't come for me. <clears throat> and to finish off the day, I did some work around the island. I just added some nice little, like, railings around these stairs or whatever. Yeah, it was super boring stuff. On day 33, I expanded the island even more. It was just getting a little too crowded, so I had to make it just slightly bigger. And I also chopped down the two trees. And right back to mining. I was pretty determined to get to phase 10 and to go kill the ender dragon by the end of these 100 days. So I had to do a lot of mining. And then these flying gorillas spawned. <laughs> you guys remember that? That felt like a while ago the last time I said that. But I still don't know their names. But these guys are dangerous, especially in hardcore mode. And for some reason, they weren't mad at me. But when they charge at you, it's so scary. But I ended up killing them both. And went right back to mining because this phase had nothing good for me. I wanted to get to the next phase as fast as possible. I did get some lily pads in the chests. And it added a nice 
first touch to the little pond. After a bit more mining, I got a ginormous panda. He was so cute. I knew I needed to make him a home as well. So I pushed him away to where his new home will be. But I had to go mining to get some more blocks for his home. And then a witch spawned. And I do not have a good history with these guys. If you see my first 100 days one block, you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. He poisoned me, but I ended up killing him right after. And I was pretty scared something random was going to come attack me while I was at one heart. So I just hid in this corner, just like what I do every day in real life. Who can relate? I then got a chest with an evoker spawn egg. I'm a noob in Minecraft, so I didn't know what it was. I was stuck in 1.8 PVP for a while. I was kind of scared to spawn it in. It was a black and gray egg, so it didn't look that promising. I wanted to play it safe, so I made a platform away from my island. I then placed him down. He's the monkey that spawns in all of those flying gorillas. I got so scared and blocked him up. I ran for my life. I was so nervous, I ran into my corner again. I didn't look that scared on video, but trust me, I, I was freaking out. And I hid in this corner all the way until the next day. Once I got out, I didn't even try to kill him. I just wanted to drop him into the void as fast as I can. And once he fell, I was so relieved. I'm never doing that again. But when he was falling, he was like waving his arms up. It was kind of funny. Let's get a replay. <laughs> But I went right back to mining. I then got another chest and inside it was a lead. Let's go. That would be so helpful for moving all these animals around into their zoo. I mean, into their home. I'm not using them as a zoo. <laughs> and you could put a lead on a bird. Is that even legal? I then got even more parrots. I grabbed my seeds and started taming them. I wanted an entire army of parrots. Once I tamed them, I tried shaking them off of my shoulders. And I sat them all upstairs. I got a whole family of parrots. Draw some cool, unique names for these parrots in the comments, guys. The most like comment will get their name used in day 200 and guess what even more witches have spawned and there was two this time they quickly poisoned me and i ran away i then ran out of food trying to heal up and i knew i had to make a quick run for it to go milk up those cows and have more food to heal up and i was really worried they would throw insta damage at me and kill me but i had to so i made a quick run for it i managed to get three soup but i also got poisoned once again but good news is i was right beside my farm and all the wheat was fully grown so i started making some bread and after so many different hits I could not kill them. They kept drinking their insta health. So my plan was to just drop them into the void. The easy way out. So I ran up there and mined the blocks right underneath their feet. And they just fell to their death. These mobs were getting out of hand. And I knew once a monster party would come, I would be totally screwed. So I had a plan to make a machine that would kill the mobs for me. So I started clearing out the area and mining away these trees. I needed a lot of space for this project. And on day 47, I started working on the contraption. On my first 100 days, I just made a little hole so I can punch all the mobs into the void but this time around we're in hardcore mode i had to make something more fun and more exciting so instead of dropping them into the void my plan was to carry the mobs about 30 feet 30 feet what 30 blocks up and drop them onto the platform and this way i can actually watch them die this would be way more exciting and this took a lot of building but it was worth it it's way more fun than just pushing them into the void but then i realized i need soul sand to make a water elevator to bring all the monsters 30 blocks up so i can drop them and i wasn't in the nether phase yet so i had to to put the project on hold but don't worry the trap is coming soon and it's gonna be great so on day 54 i continued mining i had to get out of this phase to get to the nether phase but i just can't mine without being bothered by these flying gorillas man these things are so dangerous they do so much hearts and they are so fast but anyways let's keep mining And nothing exciting really happened other than me getting poisoned for the 15th time. And then I finally got another panda and I thought it was time to finally make them a home. Ugh, oh my, I keep voice cracking. I'm going through puberty. I gathered up a whole bunch of spruce wood. I started working on the panda's home. Once I got the platform all laid down, I started filling up the hole with some dirt. And once that was done, I used the mossy cobblestone and cobblestone slabs to make some rocks around the panda's home. I planted down some jungle saplings to make it feel a little bit more jungly. <laughs> Why did I have to say that? <laughs> of course, the jungle sapling makes it more jungly. But I also wanted to make a little pond so the pandas have something to drink out of. 
and just like that the enclosure is finished now i just have to move the pandas into the hole and moving these guys was kind of hard they weigh at least 500 pounds and i just got no muscle on me i'm just skin and bones i'm a chicken wing at kfc skinny tasteless and greasy that is exactly who i am why am i making fun of myself in my own video what am i doing but once the two pandas are in they were looking pretty baller they looked quite happy in their little habitat and now i got three pretty epic enclosures now this is a fancy one block world i also thought it would be appropriate to bring my parrots into the enclosure as well because you know they're from the jungle yeah you know i also got a cat in there this might be one of my favorite enclosures which one is yours and i threw a white horse in there i'm not sure why he was just lonely <laughs> i then spent the next couple of days mining on day 67 i got a chest after mining and i got some bamboo and some cocoa beans and this was really good news because the bamboo will look great in the panda's home and with the cocoa beans i can make a cookie farm i'm really surprised i never made a cookie farm in my 500 days world so in this series i'm gonna have to make one and it's gonna be huge huge donald trump and then right after the chest i got another upgrade thank god i was so sick of those vexes do you guys like how i didn't call them flying gorillas this time yeah i had to search up their names <laughs> i was really excited for the new phase and the new phase was the red desert which is phase six and i was kind of far away from phase 10 which is the end phase so i had to do a lot of grinding but anyways i went over to the panda's home and planted the cocoa beans and the bamboo on day 68 i had a lot of work to do i have to get through all these phases fast and while i was mining my boy peter griffin spawned let's go i got my first villager and he kept walking around my island so i had to block him off before he dies these villagers are hard to come by and then i went right back to mining and then these two evokers spawned and i do not like their faces at all i knocked them down into the hole and jumped after them to kill them because i thought they were gonna spawn some vexes and i was worried but then the husks that were already down there did so much damage to me and left me at two and a half hearts i was panicking i tried building up but instead of using blocks i used redstone dust i thought it was the end of me but luckily i lived and ran away but anyways on a more important note today is a pretty funny day i'm not sure why M maybe it's the number who knows but this phase is pretty boring all it is is a lot of acacia wood and a lot of clay i did get a wandering trader though and her name was Gemma. i thought she was kind of cute hey nobody tell my girlfriend i said that <clears throat> but anyways i decided to welcome her into my island i wanted to give her a nice impression so i decided to build a house just for her because she's that special to me so i trapped her in a one by one hole hey i never said the house would be nice i mean <laughs> i did get a lot of donkeys and a lot of camels that spawned though and i'm not gonna lie those donkeys are looking kind of thick thicker than Gemma, that's for sure and on day 70 i got another monster party and i ran away as fast as i could and for some reason the zombies weren't attacking me and the evoker wasn't spawning any vexes maybe i'm just too cute to attack <laughs> I just bit my bottom lip. <laughs> but anyways, I just jumped down and started attacking them because they didn't seem to care much about me. Also, during that fight, my axe broke and only had two iron ingots left. So I had to throw my iron in the furnace. Yeah, pretty exciting stuff. While I wait for the iron to smelt, for some reason, the donkeys and the sand camels love the cold. They were all crowded in the polar bear's home. Maybe they were curious or they're just kind of, you know, slow in the brain like me. I then got another villager and the first thing he did was claim my bed. Like, what is this? You're not the boss here. You can't just sleep in my bed. He then went to say what's up to his boy, Peter Griffin, and it was the perfect time to trap him. On day 71, I started expanding the island. I needed more space for more homes for the animals. This isn't even one block anymore. I'm just playing like zoo building tycoon. <laughs> I'm just building different homes and biomes for the animals I'm getting. Hey, but I like it though. It's something different than normal one block survival. Once I was done expanding, I put these fences down in between these two poles, and I think the entire place looks amazing. And on day 72, I wanted to breed the villagers. So I went to bed after a long day of work. On day 72, I broke the villager free and tried putting a lead on him. I'm not sure why I thought it would work. Think about it. I tried putting a lead on a villager. I am so cruel. But I had to do it the boring way and put him on a boat. And my boy Peter Griffin was being extra annoying and ran away and jumped into the Arctic. Like, the polar bear could eat him at any second right now. What is up with all these animals and living in the polar bear's home? I finally moved both of the villagers with two boats. And look at this. I stacked them on top of each other like his Tetris. <laughs> I thought it looks so funny. Look at this. They're just both casually sitting on a boat on top of each other. Oh man, my humor broken. But I finally made the villager a little home. And uh, let me tell you, it, it wasn't much of a home. The home is only four walls without even a door and just one bed for one villager. <laughs> just look at the one guy staring at the sleeping villager like, oh, I'm a bad owner. <laughs> on day 73 to 74, I started designing the layouts for the new phases. I need a home for every single animal. And once I was done, this is what it looked like. It reminds me of like a mother shit that's about to take off it looks like wings or something i don't know maybe i have an imagination like a nine-year-old i'm a child at heart on day 75 there was
was a creeper family reunion. God, I hate creepers so much. And by the time it was night, I finished off making the pathways around the homes. It's starting to look like a giant ship in the air. What do you guys think? And on day 76 to 77, I continued mining. I had to speed run all the way to the phase 10. And finally, I got an upgrade. That took a while, but we did it. And phase 7 is the nether phase. We're getting so close. And I'm just hoping to get a lava bucket in a chest because I want to make a cobblestone generator. And while I was mining, I just remembered. In this phase, blazes spawn. And in my first series, blazes would light up my entire island on fire. So I made a nether rack wall to protect my entire island. After some mining, I got two piglins that spawned. And they were shaking vigorously. Maybe they were doing the Harlem shake or something. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? I just unlocked a deep memory in my brain. Oh, the good old days and the Harlem shake. I then got my first ancient debris. I was pretty excited. So I went to make my first diamond pickaxe. And then I mined it up. Let's go. And a couple of blocks later, I got another piece. I was also getting a lot of obsidian. And soon I'll be able to go to the nether. And then a hoglin spawned and yeeted me into the air. Those things always scare me. And he was Harlem shaking so hard he turned into an actual pig. And then my first ever blaze spawned. But I ended up killing him before he could even shoot a fireball. Ball. Then a gas spawn and started moaning at me. Luckily, he was suffocating in the blocks. If he could fly, I would be so screwed. I didn't have a bow on me. He would have destroyed my entire island. He did crack a hole in my nether rack shield, though. Good thing I placed that there. And I was still mining all the way until day 78 when a strider spawned. Looks just like my girlfriend. And I haven't made the home for the red desert phase yet. So that is what I started working on. I needed to give the camels and the donkey a proper home. I then started placing all the red sand on the ground and some sandstone and concrete. Now my mission was to move the donkeys and the camel from the polar bear's home to the red desert home. I grabbed my lead and yanked the donkey and the camel into their new home. And you already know, right back to mining. I had to get to phase 10. And yet again, another monster party. And this time I was actually nervous. Because having blazes and gas spawn might be the most dangerous thing to the island. They can destroy the entire island within seconds. And I was targeting the blazes. Because if I don't kill them in time, they're going to light up the entire island and it's going to burn down. Why did I make everything out of wood? I didn't learn from the first time. I ended up killing both of the blazes pretty quickly though. I then started killing the zombie pigmen while not trying to fall off because there were holes in the ground right by the one block. But for some reason, every time I get a monster party, the mobs don't even attack me. I'm not complaining though. I mean, it makes my life so much easier. And on day 80, I'm so happy I made this nether rack shield because two ghasts spawned and they would have blew up my entire island. But instead, they just blew up the nether rack. And after a ton of mining, I got a chest full of netherite scraps and a lava bucket. I can finally make a cobblestone generator. And right after that, I finally got the other upgrade. I had to go through a lot of blocks and a lot of mob fights to get here. And phase 8 was the idle phase. And I literally have no idea what this means, but I, it, it's white. It just gives me a lot of quartz. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. It's not a biome in Minecraft. And the idle phase was looking pretty peaceful. It's giving me nice white quartz blocks, grass blocks, and honey blocks. I thought I was chilling. But then a swarm of angry honeybees started attacking me. They poisoned me, and I was getting pretty low. How are these honeybees doing more damage than zombie pigmen? And on day 81, I realized I finally went through the nether phase so i got a lot of soul sand so now i can start working on the water elevator for my mob trap so i started placing some water down to transport the mobs i also placed down some ice so the mobs won't get stuck in between the water and slapped down some soul sand i then spent the next couple of days building the water elevator 30 blocks high i filled up the front side with glass so i can have a nice view of all the mobs flying up the elevator i then made the diving board where the mobs will fall to their death and i started filling up the elevator with kelp and once it was all filled up i swam down and broke all the kelp and just like that when i punch mobs down into the hole they will fly up the water elevator onto the diving board and fall to their death you know most normal people will just make a hole in the ground so they could fall into the void but nah that's boring i had to make a diving board so i can watch all the mobs fall and die <laughs> i'm so cruel but it's so much more entertaining i can't wait to see this in action and as i was mining some slime spawn and they were my first victim i punched one in and waited for him to fly up the elevator and there he goes off the diving board let's see what kind of trick he does and he back flipped into his death. Come on, you guys gotta agree. That's way more entertaining than just a hole in the ground. Way more effort though, but come on, just please agree with me. I don't want to feel bad that I spent five days building this diving board just for that. On day 85, I finally made more beds so my villagers can finally start breeding. And I needed to feed them carrots. So I started working on a brand new farm. I placed down a whole bunch of dirt in a way to make it look somewhat nice. I didn't want just a normal square of dirt for a farm. I started hoeing the ground. I placed down some spruce slabs to cover up the water just to make it look a little better and i farted all the carrots into the ground now it's a waiting game hopefully my villagers don't starve even though it's been like 30 days without food i then spent the next two days mining and after a whole bunch of work i got the next upgrade i'm coming so close to the end boys and the next phase is the desert desolate desolate 
desolate desolate land i can't say that word but phase nine and on day 88 i had to work on the nether zoo i need a home for these striders so i used netherrack as the floor and while i was doing that my dog's head was kind of a uh, kind of glitched through the wall it, it looked kind of weird but i also slapped down some soul sand and started working on a little nether brick house just to resemble a nether fortress i also threw in some basalt spikes because why not now some shroom lights and magma and we got ourselves a nether biome it looks pretty good if only there were leaves though man i'm missing my leaves i then took my lead and yanked my girlfriend and her sister into the nether and now the striders finally have a home they're not living in the freezing winter with the polar bear and on day 89 i had to work on the next biome which is the idol right beside the nether so i slapped a whole bunch of court blocks on the ground i have no idea what the idol biome is so i just threw these random staircases and slabs around trying to make a cool design and some beehives i also dragged these skeleton horses into the idol but i'm not sure if they live here but i mean now now they do i guess the very next day i harvested all of the carrots and i wanted to go to the nether soon so i slapped down another portal in the nether phase i also blocked off the portal with some spruce slabs because i didn't want my girlfriend and her sister escaping my prison i also made a sugarcane farm because i wanted to make an enchantment table because i'll be fighting the ender dragon soon i also harvested the wheat and bred my cows because i need that leather or some books and it was finally time to make a full set of diamond armor i put it all on and let's go i look pretty baller and i mined for the rest of the day and obviously when i'm mining i always get surprised so two creepers randomly spawned and i thought they were gonna blow up so instead of killing them i pushed them into my trap and off they go off the diving board and they fall to their death now that is an entertaining way to kill mobs then these two poisonous spiders start chasing me around and i couldn't even hit them so i got scared and jumped into the water a pretty smart idea to be honest and then three skeletons on horses randomly spawned so i pushed them into the water but the thing is when they fell off the diving board i forgot they were on horses and they didn't take any damage and when they were shooting arrows at me they broke my shield so i ran back in my chest room to make a quick shield and killed off the skeletons on the horses and now i just have three random horses just chilling on my island what did i do with them and after a crazy amount of mining i got a zombie villager spawn egg in a chest so i can convert him back into a villager if i needed and as i was mining two evoker spawned and spawned a whole bunch of flying gorillas i quickly knocked them into the trap but a whole bunch of vexes were on me i knew i wasn't up for the fight so i just jumped into the water hoping the water and the turtles would save me and it looks like they're allergic to water because they just ran away and it's so hard to aim these little vexes they're so fast and so small i then did some more harvesting on my carrots and i finally fed my villagers after like 50 days of starving and i went right back to mining i was so close to the end phase even silverfish were spawning from the block that's how close i was i was getting pretty excited and guess what even more evoker spawned and they spawned like 15 vexes there were so many of them chasing me and to make matters even worse like four phantoms spawn at the same time i was running for my life with two hearts with a whole squad of vexes and phantoms on my tail i ran over to my mushrooms to try to get some mushroom stew to try to heal up i was getting surrounded by all of them i don't remember one block being this challenging but i focused on killing the phantoms off first so i can target the vexes after and once all the phantoms were dead all the vexes just disappeared i guess they're just scared of me now after the battle there was two totems of undying right in front of my diving board though this would be so helpful and on day 92 i got the next upgrade and i'm finally on phase 10 which is the end phase right after this the end portal will spawn we're on the last stretch boys just one final push cue the time lapse I wanted to take a break from mining, so I started working on the desolate land phase. God, I can't say that word. I'm not even sure what lives in the desolate land. I mean, it's kind of barren and empty, so I guess nothing. But I placed down a whole bunch of stone brick down for the floor, made some random rock looking designs and spikes coming off of the ground, and dragged some skeleton horses into the phase. That was a quick and easy build. I then went to kill all of my breaded cows for some leather, grabbed all my sugar cane and turned it into paper, and made some fatty books. Turned those into bookshelves, made myself an enchantment table, and placed it down. And after a bit of mining, I got a monster party. And this one wasn't too bad. It was basically all endermites. And I just punched them all into the trap. Killed the endermen for their ender pearls. And just watched it rain with endermite off the diving board. A pretty amazing sight to see. And I finished off the day with more mining. Now I wanted to make some netherite armor. I already had eight ancient debris and four netherite scraps from the chest. So all I had to do was go to the nether and get just a little bit more. So I jumped into the nether and the weird thing is it's the same exact nether that I had on my first 100 days on one block. The seed must not change, but that's good news because I know where everything is. But anyways, I quickly went mining for some ancient debris. I did get three ancient debris super quickly, but after that, it was nothing for a while. So I ran back to my base, enchanted my pickaxe at my enchantment table with efficiency three and went right back to mine 
mining. Now, this is a lot faster. After an entire day of mining, I got 11 ancient debris, and that should make me enough netherite scraps to make a full set of netherite armor and tools. I made myself a whole bunch of netherite ingots and upgraded all my armor to netherite. Oh, yeah, look at me. But the island was coming along pretty nicely. It was a great idea to make a zoo for every single phase. On day 95, I wanted to make a mob spawner. Finally, it only took 95 days, but I needed XP to enchant my armor so I can fight the ender dragon soon. And once I was finished, there was a lot of mobs. Way more than my 100 days ocean only world spawner. If you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out after this one. It was a pretty good 100 days episode. And it was so nice because I could just punch all of them with my fist and they will die. Free XP. Let's go. And on day 96, it was dedicated to enchanting everything with good enchantments. I ran back and forth enchanting, disenchanting, and killing the mobs for XP. This was a pretty long process and I was getting pretty unlucky with all of my enchantments. But I was finally satisfied. And now it was time to enchant a bow my first enchantment i only got unbreaking three so i disenchanted it and the next enchantment i got infinity exactly what i was looking for i then enchanted another bow and got a pretty good combo so i smelted up some iron to make an anvil and combined both of the bows to make a god bow let's go power four infinity flame and unbreaking it doesn't get much better than that and i think i was ready to fight the ender dragon now all i had to do was mine enough until the portal comes and the end was actually closer than i thought all i had to do was mine a couple of blocks and the end portal spawned let's go and all i needed was four eyes of ender because this portal already comes with like six or eight i don't know I'm, not, I'm bad at math i placed down the four eyes of ender i needed lit up the portal and i was ready to slay the ender dragon and i yeeted myself in and obviously the first thing you have to do is break all the crystals i don't know why i need to explain this so i broke all the crystals with my arrows while dodging all the dragon stanky breath and once i got them all i started swinging my axe into the dragon's head and he launched me into the air and my brain is so slow that i landed and then placed the water down oh my reaction time is so slow after a couple of arrow shots to the dragon he perched down again and it was the perfect chance to just light him up with arrows and kill him that was pretty quick i then grabbed the dragon egg and now i'll finally have a home for the dragon egg i jumped back into the portal back to my island and i noticed there was another villager my villager actually had a baby and he was fully grown and now we're on day 100 i didn't have much time to make the dragon egg a home so i grabbed the end stone and some random end blocks and started working on a home i filled up the entire ground with end stone and put slabs all around it to spice it up a little bit and i wanted to put the dragon egg right smack in the middle to showcase the amazing feat we have accomplished to survive 100 days in one block hardcore i then made a random ring around it to try to make it look a little better and this is what i came up with i also grabbed some shroom lights to add some lighting to make the place feel more unique and there is my 100 days thanks for watching please subscribe if you guys are new and comment and drop a like if you guys want to see 200 days in one block hardcore